Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I tell you what, it seems like we have a hard time getting this interview, but we're going we're gonna to get it done so we can um, get out you guys' way. But I have no idea what's um, been going on um, today with this. I don't know if it's the internet, but I know that Dion and I are going to do this um, interview. And so I'm talking to Dion Wingate. He's an author. He's an entrepreneur. And now he has added another great milestone being a real estate agent so if you um need a house a storefront he's your man he is your man hey found miss faye he's your man and you um he worked for north carolina real estate firm llc and um if you need him his number is 919 i don't want to give you the wrong number so i might wait till he get back on so, but yeah, if you need a house, storefront, man, he's the man with the bow tie. So we're going to, um, we're going to do, it's just. Okay. <laughs> and I so, you. no, I don't know what happened. I said, we're going to do this interview. So, um, the, your number is 919, is it 551? 919-551-2274. And you, that's how you can contact him for your home ownership, storefront ownership. And I don't know what else you can, um, any building, construction building, yeah. I don't know. He, he is the man with the plan for sure. So, I I'm, so I'm, I'm so proud to see um, when you post people that have trusted you with such a big purchase. Because sometimes, like you said, people do get discouraged, and especially if your credit is not where it needs to be, but then you still give them resources to get to get there. And even when you can't get them approved, do you still work with them? Do you still keep in contact with them and making sure they're on the right track to being able to purchase their home? Yeah, yeah. Um, because one thing um, that no, not everyone has perfect credit. Right. Um, and that's a fact. No matter the nationality, you know. Right, right. That, that's just factual. So um, my main thing is to let them know, don't be ashamed of that situation. Don't be ashamed of that. Just be honest, honest with them. We'll be transparent and I can make it right. happen for you. you know? well, I try, right. I'll try, I'll give you 100 199%. <laughs> you know, right? Because that one percent, that that other one percent out of the two hundred percent, I need you to help yourself. You know, right, right. <clears throat> and so, how does that affect you know working so many hours? How does that affect you balancing it with your your family, spending time with your family? How did you have to learn to balance now a new career? Um, it's it's just natural because um. Both of everything that I've done has been really time consuming. So it's kind of natural now. Right. Even with the thing to the nonprofit to you know, I was um people don't know, I was traveling to and from um Lee County, Sanford, North Carolina. And then when yes. I had office in Cary, so I was still traveling from uh Raleigh to Cary. Um mm -hmm. so um in late hours. I wasn't getting home a lot of times to um ten, eleven o'clock at night. Uh so, um, you know, and with this, I do a lot of working from my phone. I have my laptop with me. I do a lot of working with right. for the phone. Well, I say I'm 24 hours because if you're making this purchase, look, we helping each other. Let's just be transparent here. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, you should be able to call me at any time and ask me them questions. But is you that also should have knowledge to know. So you, but but you all should should have the common sense to know that, look. If I'm just asking him what color was the room that we in the house yeah, that we want yeah. to see, you also know that this can wait probably into a decent business hour. You know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So so we're gonna um I wanna talk about you had COVID. Yeah. And <clears throat> when you told me you had it, I was like, wow. So what transpired to make you feel or even happen for you to go to the doctor um, at first i didn't even go to the doctor 
Um, I just did, I just had a real bad headache and didn't feel well. Um, but um, you know, um, so when I when I finally felt like okay, I can go out, um, I was driving my car and I passed out. Mm. And I got to the hospital and they gave me a test and they said I had COVID. Which um, until this day, I don't. I believe that. Um, I do still believe that people do still get sick. That everything is not, um, you know. So um, I got to the hospital. Um, they said I had COVID uh, because I passed out. And um, so you passed was, out. Was driving. Were you driving to the doctor, or you was just just out? I, really, I shouldn't have been driving um, at that time. Um, because uh, I, I went to take care of business uh, to show, actually to show a property. Um, right. And I knew I shouldn't have been out. Uh, I knew I should have still been. I didn't know I had COVID. I knew I should have been in the house. Um, right. Because I wasn't feeling well. But, um, you know, uh, I should have called somebody to come pick me up. But I said, no, mm -hmm. I'm drive, uh, drive back. So um, on my way back, I can remember just rolling down the windows because I, I knew I was going to pass out, but I was like, right. oh, I can make it home. Mm -hmm. and it didn't work. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it home, but you know, I'm so thankful for that situation yeah. that um, I'm still here to able to talk because um, I was on New Bern Avenue in Raleigh and those who are familiar with um, New Bern Avenue in Raleigh, you know, it's a lot of traffic, but thanks to God. Yes. Almighty, yes. Um, it was low traffic. I didn't hit a pole. I didn't hit, um, you know, a fire, uh, you know, uh, uh, anything or nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, right. I probably wouldn't have been, I'd probably be just in disbelief if I would have been so uh, irresponsible to drive knowing I'm not feeling well and would have hurt someone, you know. But um, right. so you know, I, I, I messed up. All four of my rims on my, I had uh, 20s on my car, messed up all the rims, but that's material. You know? Right, right. And you know, so you didn't have any other symptoms besides the headache. You didn't lose your smell. Like some people say they lose their smell, they lose their taste. All you had just was a headache. Yeah, I had a headache. Uh, I went to the doctor. He was, um, he put me, you know, to check my chest and my breathing. He's like, well, <laughs> you know. Um, that's strange, you know, the breathing, just basically just go home. There's nothing that we can do. I didn't lose wow. my smell or anything, nothing. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, I always, you know, say, I don't really think the medical people know as much about this virus because just like you, you only had a headache. You know, and, and so many people have different symptoms. So many people think, oh, maybe I just have a flu. Maybe I just have, you know, just a bad cold. But when you went and they told you you had COVID, what was your initial reaction? Because I'm sure you didn't think that you had COVID. My, my initial reaction was, all right, you know, because um, how, how I feel now, actually, um, I do agree with you. Um, about that, um, you know, I, I feel like this, people need to do what's best for them, you know? Right, um, right. Because uh, when they said it, I kind of, I kind of knew that that's what they would come back with. It's like, because now everything is COVID. Uh, actually, right. You know, everything. Right, not right. Much, that's not COVID. And um, with that so being said, what were the medications uh, and the treatments that you took, or did you take any medication or treatment for, for they it? Medication. They didn't give me no medication, nothing. They didn't give me no medication. Uh, so uh, the 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 strange thing that happened while I was <laughs> in the hospital, uh, the doctor, and if it wasn't for Ebony uh, as well too, uh, coming to pick me up, mm -hmm. uh, they had. This was very. This was very strange. They had offered. They was. Say, they told me this. Is, this is the truth. They said, "Well, do you want to try this experimental uh, drug? It may have side effects." Hmm. Um, I can't think of the name of it. I'm, this is what the doctor said. He said, "But you know, it's a lot of side effects to it. Do you want to try it?" 
uh, it's experimental, but you know, it helps some people. Uh, I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> you know, um, it wasn't, it wasn't the, it wasn't the shots that, that you, were, it, was, mm -hmm. it was something that they was trying to get, get me to take. So and I'm thinking about how many people probably took that, you know? Yeah. So, and how many people may die? Them. Them. No. Yeah, um, they, they literally told me that. I mean, literally like told me that. So, you know, um, like I say, uh, everybody is like, now it's a different type of racism. It's the back yeah. and the unback. It's everybody looking down. Yeah. If, if you're vaccinated, you're looking down on the people that ain't, that's unvaccinated. If you're unvaccinated, you're calling the people that's vaccinated stupid and puppy. But what we need to realize that we all are human and none of us know. Right, none of us so know. Whatever works for you. Because, you know, I go to work every day. I work in a high school. So just imagine out of all those kids, we don't know. I don't know who got COVID. I, I, I don't know. All I know is I have to make sure I'm taking precaution to wash my hands. You know, we still wear masks. You know, and some of the parents down here, they're in the uproar because they're saying let these kids take their masks off. But, you know, we have our own beliefs. But at the same time, if you're choosing to be in a place that they're requiring these things, then either you're going to follow the rules or you're not. Because you have to think about other people's yeah. lives as well. And so how long was you in the hospital? I wasn't in the hospital. I just went and they sent me back. So you went and they sent you home and then you quarantined. Did you have to quarantine? Yeah, I quarantined. Uh, I quarantined. Uh, and, you know, that that was pretty much that. Uh, and, oh, you know, that this is this is just i mean the whole thing is just outrageous now it's like yeah everybody turned into doctors everybody is a medical physician you know the main <laughs> thing i believe is that you need to stay healthy that that without covid you need to take some healthy precautions anyway you should if it's a respiratory exactly. um virus that means you need to probably walk or run do some cardio or um mm -hmm. just be active uh you know because um, from my understanding, LeBron James just got COVID. He's vaccinated. Wow. You know. You know. Well, you know, people get vaccinated, but they're still catching COVID. And I just say COVID is don't have a respect to a person. I mean, you can be vaccinated or not and still, you know, get it. But even during your process, did you do more research just for you? Because I know you you like knowledge. You like to understand things that are happening. No, I, I really didn't because what they do, it's a lot of fear out there. So anything mm -hmm. that came on the news about it, I just didn't watch it. I just turned from it because I didn't want to have it and then and then be in such a fear and panic that right. you know see that fear, if I was if that fear would have led me to take that medicine with all them side effects and who to say I wouldn't mm -hmm. have more problems with that. You know, uh but you know, like I said, it's it's to uh, me personally. I stayed away from the news uh, when I did. Have right. I stayed far away from the news um, because a lot of people they don't discuss the people that have passed that have been vaccinated and mm -hmm. the back the people that's vaccinated. What they're saying is, yeah, it helped you survive, but it has like a ninety nine percent survival rate so <laughs> so it's, it's helping you once you get vaccinated now we up to what the third you're up to the third booster shot well and I, I, you know and and, and, and you know my thing what is, I'm so do you think when you think that we're going to ever get back to a place where we can just be free just free to breathe this fresh air or whatever air they saying we're breathing. But how was your did did your family have to quarantine as well? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. so everybody had yeah, to quarantine. Yeah, everybody had caught it. Yeah. So um but uh the the whole the whole process um it gave you know it gave you it gave you time to, to kind of think. That's why I stayed away from the media. You know, I stayed away right. from looking at the news. Oh, this person, because um, one thing that we all promise is death anyway. I mean, 
I mean, any way we look at it. And no, I don't want to go from nothing, not, not, you know, I want to go from natural causes, not, not, um, and I, and, and I think that's everybody's, uh, wish, a dream, but right. hey, you know, if, uh, I think that people will eventually, like they are, they're getting fed up with the misinformation. Uh, one week, right. they're saying that it's mandated, and the next week, they're saying that it's not <laughs> mandated to wear a mask. The next week, Ooh. they're saying that we don't know how long the vaccination is going to last. The next week, they're saying yeah. that, all right, it's another shot. So um, I say you make, I say people just make whatever decision they feel for their family. I'm not saying that, who who to say is that the vaccine doesn't work? Who to say that that people, I think, right. me personally, I think everybody that has it. If it's airborne, I think everybody that has it. Um, oh, yeah, oh, oh, of course. Time, okay. our immune, yeah, I think over so, time, our immune system will kind of adjust to it. Because you remember how when, like, AIDS first came, you see how people was getting skinny mm -hmm. and dying all. Yep. Sex hasn't changed. Yep. People ain't even having safer sex. Uh, you know, yep. so they go to the doctor, they get sick, break out with all type of lesions and stuff. I'm I'm just stating a fact. It's factual. Yeah, you remember, yeah. You remember how, how yeah, you know, um, not saying that it's not out there anymore, but we probably have right, to walk around with that. But people are living, they're living longer lives with a disease that was yeah, supposed to take you out. Yeah. You know, so I'm so I'm wondering, do our bodies naturally just uh adapt? They have to. So yeah. Probably because you know our bodies have to adapt. Yeah. Because you have this mask on. We our body wasn't designed to walk around with something over our nose and mouth. And if you really think about it, when you start wearing these masks, it's almost like you have to retrain yourself how to breathe. Because I know, like, walking up them steps at work, I'd be out of breath. I'd be about to pass out. Because I'm like, I'm trying to breathe, but you're trying to be safe. And it's like you're trying to retrain your body to do something unnatural, like breathe with your face covered up. Yeah, but we adapt. We we adapt because we adapt to the different climates. We adapt to winter, summer, fall, spring. We yeah, adapt. Yeah. We we adapt. You know, so that's the good thing. But you have to realize, like places like China, they've been wearing masks now. They've been. Yeah. That's just part of their culture. That's just part of their norm. That's just normal for some countries just to wear their masks. So um, they don't know any different um, than that. But um, I think that here that it's going to be more people rebelling against. Because if nobody knows, if we don't have a government or uh, people in power that we can trust and that give us definite answers, yep. um, I think that it's going to just be confusion and it's going to be more separation amongst the people as a whole. When right. We should really be together uh, because well, none of us know. Well. Yeah. So when a person that's surviving COVID, how do you maneuver now when you're out? Do you maneuver the same way you did, you know, doing your mask or did anything change how you, you know, go out now? Um, yeah, I, I make sure I have on my mask um, and I social distance as much as possible. But hell, I mean, when we're around family and stuff, we don't we don't wear masks. Yeah. So, um, and we don't know where they've been. We don't know who they've been around. We don't even know if they kept on mm -hmm. their mask. So that's why the whole thing really makes, you know, um, is, is kind of uh, confusing, you know. Um, right, right. Just because of that factor, right there, you know. So if your family, and we have a big family on the Williams side. I mean, we have a really yeah, huge we family. Do. So if we're having a family reunion function with, 50, 60 people there, nobody has on a mask. What's the difference than going to a club and mm -hmm. nobody have on a mask? Right, right. Because that's 50 or 60 people that you don't know where they've been. Out of that 50, it, exactly. 60 people, 56 people, somebody done contacted COVID somewhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know? so, so now um, they're saying, okay, you can, you can 
you can go to concerts, you can, you can be outside, <laughs> you know, and uh, don't wear a mask. But I, but you know, I right. keep on my mask though. I do just, you know, um, because um, I'm, I'm not gonna play Russian roulette if I know I know that you can catch it, and I know that colds do it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to do my part. I just want to do my part. If and somebody feel like they vaccinated, yeah. don't they don't want nobody around them with the mask on. But I also want you to respect other people. If just because you vaccinated exactly. don't mean you can't spread it or you can or you can't die from it. <laughs> you know, uh, that's that, <laughs> that happens. You know what I mean? It, you know, and that's you know, and that was so. Um, that was uh, my main concern when JT was living, like, you know, because his immune system had gotten so weak. And so like I, when I came home, I would just automatically take my clothes off, put them in the washing machine to keep, you know, if it's in, you know, if it's, I've been around somebody, because like you said, if somebody's immune system is low, I have to still go out. I still have to function. But when I come home, I just came home, didn't touch anything and just took clothes off. And so I can, you know, make sure that I'm protecting him. And, you know, and I still do it. Even my friends, if I, they know they've been around somebody, they, you know, we're, we're sitting on the outside. We got masks on because we respect each other because we, like you said, they don't know where the people they've been visiting. And then here we are all gathered here to, you know, and so I am not afraid of COVID, but I still do my part. I still do my part. You know, I have, you know, my hand sanitizers, yeah. you know, whatever. And so what would you tell people, you know, that have survived COVID or have a family member? Because some family members are truly fighting COVID and some of them don't make it. So how would, what would you tell people, you know, about COVID? Because you, you did survive, you know? I would, I, I would, I would definitely tell them to stay away from the media. Uh, if they're going through it, right. because it's bad, it's bad enough going through it from all the stuff you done heard and all the confusion. I would, I would definitely suggest and, and pray because every year people die from pneumonia. Every, I mean, they die from cancer. They die from right. uh, just, just colds. I mean, everybody doesn't right. have a strong immune system anyway. And I was thinking back, even when a baby is born, you know, a lot of times we have to scrub up and. The mask up before yeah, we even go yeah. home. So right, because right. the immune system's not weak. So we have people, we have other things out here. So I would, I would just, act, uh, just say stay away from the media and try to stay at and try to move around. You know, just try to move around, take a walk, or, or do something. You know, just take a walk because that's all you can do. So sit and yeah. learn about what's going to gonna happen. Um, yeah. Every day. Okay. Every day. Yeah. I so you still day. run and then you come home, get ready, and then you go do what you have to do. You went out again. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I, I, I'll tell you what, this is crazy. But look, I don't know what's, what's going on with this video, but, um, but can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So what we're going to do is Dion and I are going to get together and we're going to figure out how we can do another interview. Can you hear me still? Can you hear me now? Because I don't know why or what's happening with our volume. If anybody that's still actively live on here, can you tell me if you can hear me? To just type in, I can hear you. I see four people. I don't know if you can hear me. Amy, if you're still on here, Pam, tell me if you can hear me. Um, because I don't I don't know why we're having such trouble tonight with this Facebook Live. Um I don't know. Okay. So, Dion, can you hear me? If someone's on here, can you let me know if you can hear me still before I go out?
before I go out. Can people, can you guys hear me? Uh, I'm trying to see if people, can you hear me? Because I don't know why we keep kicking out. Okay. I I don't know what's going on with the internet. Um but <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is instead of us keep going on coming back out, I will get with him, get with Dion, and then him and I will pick another date just to pop on and do some chit chatting um with each other because I don't want us to keep coming on, popping on, coming on, popping on. Um yeah, thanks, Miss Bay, but it's I don't know why me and um Dion keep popping on and off, on and off. Um, Dion, if you still on, if we can just get together and pick a day. Um, let me see, he's trying to come back on. Because I don't know why we keep popping in and out. But he's gonna come back on and then we're gonna try to wrap it up really quickly before we go off. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, look, they don't want that, they don't want the message that we have today. To exactly. So have I'm to like, dude. But so yeah. so with that being said, I want to talk about your your um your modeling stuff now. I am just I am so proud of you. You have truly stepped out of your box. And that is truly true. Oh, so. What modeling stuff? Yeah, I modeling. mean, like, okay, so you did the first, um, you, um, Willie had you out there on, uh, in October at the fashion show. And so, right. and it's, when I see you, it, it looks comfortable for you. It looks like that's where you need to be. And it's it oh, wow. it's different to see you behind the scenes versus on the scenes, you know, because right. you're you're good being behind the scenes. But what does it feel like when you're out there? Because you you just seem like it's natural. Some people have to work at it, but when I see your pictures and see you, you know, the poses and stuff, it just seems natural. Well, you know, I walk slow anyway. <laughs> 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 but I mean, but it felt it, it looks like that's something you enjoy. No, I re I be nervous as you know what. Um I be nervous, but um like I said, I like to challenge myself. So that's the boldness. That's that's the boldness because like yeah. you said, you know, people People always see like when we do different stuff like shows and you know doing different things. They think, oh, it's just so easy. But sometimes they don't realize that it takes a lot of boldness and a lot of confidence to say, all right, I gotta get this done. And they just think because it looks good, they don't see the behind the scenes stuff that you know we put together and before we even come out there. And then when you come out on the runway, it's like people looking, you don't know what's gonna be the reaction. So when you first walked out there, what did you think? Um, I actually, um, my mind kind of went blank uh, mm -hmm. my first time walking out, but um, I knew that I had to go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, I just did, I just did my normal walk, um, just did my normal walk, walk out, uh, pose, and walk back. But uh, my heart was about to beat out my chest. A couple of times that I've done it, um, but you're going to continue. Like I said, it's all about challenging yourself. Yeah, but you're going to continue to come out your box and do more shows. I'm sure. I see you doing that because well, you, maybe, you maybe you know um, you got that swag now. You you you. And it's funny because you always had your own swag, but now that when I look at these photo shoots, I'm like, dang, like. And I always say JT would be so proud of him because it's like when you had your shoes on, and I was like, mm hmm, yep. You know, it's because you're you're coming into who you are, and and sometimes we have to change our look, and your whole style changed. You know, it's like you always, but you really like you like you on GQ all the way up, and I like it. It, um, you know, it, I think it comes with maturing and um, 
just not caring about what everybody else like and wearing what you like. Right, right. You know. So uh, right. once I got to that point and not worried about the trends or worried about what's in, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and just start being me. You know, uh, yeah. that's what I like, and you know, I like a lot of vintage clothes and and different right. things. So I didn't, I stopped caring about what other people think because actually in the shows you notice every a lot of times I will bring my own clothes that they will walk out there and that'll be stuff that I will wear. Like a lot yeah. of times when I dress the male models or the models in, this stuff that I would wear on a regular, on a day basis, you know. Right, so, right. Um, you know, uh, I just embrace who I am at this point. Yeah. And, you know, and we come from a family of fashion. We, we, we're we just, you know, it's just in our blood. We, we came from a family that loved fashion, that, you know, when you saw us, you know we're going to be, we're going to be dressed. And I say we was born into the fashion because that's truly who our parents was, you know, our cousins and stuff like that. And that's one thing about me. I found that my style is changing, you know, from mama because she'd be saying, do you like this? No, I don't like that. You know, and she'd be like, well, I thought you, no, mm -mm. you know, because I'm learning because I like different stuff now, you know, I like different stuff. And you had said something in november november the second you wrote a post and you were standing um downtown and you said my life changed in a positive and lucrative way once i began investing in myself versus things and i think a lot of times when you come to that realization that's when you have matured because people think stuff define who they are and then when we see that it doesn't, then we our focus change and it shifts. So what was the point that you realized that? Um, like during the pandemic, you know, I had a lot of time to think. Uh, and um, it's like, well, you have this time now. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you can't go anywhere. You can sit around and complain about it. Or mm -hmm. you can find some if you when you invest in education or a trade, you never can go wrong. Right, right. But the thing I realized once you invest in yourself, yeah. I'ma tell you, once you invest in yourself, you get all the material things. Miss, that don't Miss mean, Faith, that you, come, you always you don't even care about the material. You don't even <laughs> You don't even care about the material things after a while because you can, you got them already. You know, once you yeah. invest in yourself, and it feels so much better when you when you buy material things and you and you know that you got like 10, 20 grand to the side. I'm not look, family, I'm not saying that I have that to the side <laughs> or friends. I'm not saying I have that to the side, but what I'm saying is. <laughs> Hey, you, 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 you just gave me the analogy. And Miss Faye said, uh, she said Dion Wenge always had his own swag. Thank you, Faye. I love Faye to death. That, 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 oh, that, you know, she's going she, to um, she she be love. on Hot Topic, too. So, yeah. That's amazing. I have, she has an amazing story. Anytime I go to yeah. Sanford, if uh, I'm having an event or something, and I, all I have to do is call Faye like uh, a couple of days in advance. If she can do it, she there, front and center. So uh, I love Faye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but, um, yeah, that's, but you that's know, true though. Um, once you once you invest in yourself, nobody can take that from you. No, no, and you know, and that's just like you know, me and you talk, but I haven't really talked to you in depth. But you know, since JT Depp, I I've lost some stuff. I've, I've lost some stuff, but, you know, God has truly kept me, you know, and, and, you know, and people, you know, they probably think, oh, he did this and he did that. No. And the thing about it is, even after all the stuff I lost, I, I, I'm still grateful, you know, I'm still grateful. I'm still thankful because you know what, I will gain those things back and it's going to be what god desired for me to have and you know and sometimes 
you know, I tell people, ten four. The, ten four. yeah, the struggle is real, but yet and still, I know who has been there. I know who's there. Oh. And I know. We ain't gonna speak, we ain't gonna speak struggle into the existence. The words are powerful. The challenge. Well, yeah, no, I'm struggling. saying I have to. Well, I'm not struggling now. Yes, I mean, and I'm well, good. Well, we ain't gonna, well, we ain't gonna speak that. Yeah, we're gonna, that was just, that was just challenges. That was just options. Yeah, challenging. Because yeah, I use challenging. It was challenging. Yeah, it was challenging. But, yeah, it was yeah. challenging, but you know what? I'm, not to correct you, but. I'm, yeah. No, you're good. No, you're good. But no, it was, it's, you know, and I need to stop saying struggle because we can teach people not to say struggle. It was challenging. And the challenge was it made me stronger. It made me know that I can be bold in saying, okay, this is how it is. We're going to move past this. And so, mm -hmm. and, you know, even with you, I, when you, your story came up again from um, 2017 on your newsfeed when you did your interview and it was amazing how you said you had challenges even just getting there but once you got there mm -hmm. all the doors that was meant to be open for you just open but when you was on there did you even imagine where the doors was going to open oh. You know, I always, I always uh, try to think. I always try to. I, I always felt like I was there before I got there. If that, if right. that make make any sense to anyone out there, um, because uh, little do a lot of people know. Uh, some of them shows that I was going. I can recall one show I went to in Virginia. I ain't, my bank account was empty. I had a big change jar. I had change jar. I had to mm -hmm. you go to the corn changer, use that change to put in the car, put gas in the car to make it to a show in Virginia. And right. hope that I had enough to make it back because I only had like about five dollars after that in my pocket. But however, once I got there, my head was up high. I knew the mission, right. I knew what I came to do. And I felt like I right. was, and I knew I was already there. This was just a challenge. That wasn't a struggle. That right. was just a challenge. Right. That's just personal. Right. Just knowing that you get there, you know. Right. So, right. Um, you know, I have a lot of stories like that, that 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 people wouldn't know about. That people only see, um, and I take that very uh, serious. You never, you never let the, let let the energy know or nothing that 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 you're bothered. You look at it like shit. This is gonna get better. It can't be dark forever. Sun come back out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I call them challenges. Right, you know, right, challenges and that's the perfect word. A struggle, just changes. struggle. Yes, yes. Because yeah. you know what, struggles. Because yeah. I could, if you really think about it, you know, uh -huh. you can stay there. But challenges push us to be better. It push us to see that there is another way. You, you're you're so right and you know and struggle you just you just out yeah 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 and and that's and i'm i'm glad you you know call that because you know what when we start saying we're struggling then we we might tend to stay there but when we say we have a challenge that means if you have a challenge then you're going to think of ways how you can persevere and and get to the next level right. you know so yeah and you know, and a lot of my guests have really persevered. It's amazing, you know, to see. Like even Miss Faye, I can't wait to you know talk to her, hear her story, you know, because it's good when you see people that you know that you know start persevering and moving forth despite the challenges that may have been presented to them or they may have to endure to get where they're at now. And so when you go back to it's, Sanford, it's very amazing. Yeah, it is. So when you go back to Sanford, do you um, try to touch bases with people that may still be in a challenge state or try to just encourage them to do better, to, to, to see better for themselves? 
Um, well, actually, um, uh, to be frankly honest with you, um, I really don't. Uh, because uh, what I realize is that a lot of time when it's people that you know, mm -hmm. um, they used to seeing you in a certain light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what they want to reflect on is that light that they mm -hmm. saw you in, which can bring exactly. you back and put you mm -hmm, in a place. Mm -hmm. So no, if I could, if I could say, if I do say it, I might say an encouraging word and keep it moving, right. you know, but um, I, I, I don't, I don't really do that much um, because one, it's a small yeah. town. And um, yeah. even when I was doing the nonprofit, that's why I moved to Florida there actually because um, the people there, a lot of the people there and a lot of the organizations, um, it's all about see me or, uh, or um, a com it turns, it starts out as a collaboration, then it turns into a competition, you know. You better uh, believe it. Uh, it's sort of like people act like the town isn't big enough for everybody. Um, right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I felt as though that uh, I was starting to feel like an outsider, even though I was doing great things there. Uh, well, I still love well, the people we, there, but I, I love myself more. Right, we we're in the same boat. And I remember yeah. something you said one time. You said, you know, you and I talked, and we said sometimes we just have to move in silence, and then once we do what we need to do, then when they see it, they're like. Oh, when when did this happen? And you know, and that's just like you know, even here in you know Southern Pines, I if you're not in with the people, you don't get that support, you know. Because even when I did the kids' fashion show, it was free; nobody had to pay anything. All you had to do is bring your kids, and you know. And I said it's a sad thing when you have organizations out here that's not charging you anything and doing something for these young kings and young queens to build self-confident, to love who they are, and you don't even want to bring them. But if it was for adults, you'll be knocking the door down because you want to shine. But when are we going to shine on our kids? When are we going to shine to let our kids shine? And so that's why I struggle, you know, even now with doing stuff here because you know it's like you said if you're not with the in crowd or you're not conforming to what they want you to do they're not going to support you and i will not compromise who i am to fit in yeah but the strange thing about that uh they always want you to support them in what they do uh that, that's just some stuff that i observe uh in yeah that, in that element um so it's like well you can you can have it it's just sanford i mean but um i'm gonna help the people in a different way i help the people in silence you know, yeah. you know what i'm saying i help them <laughs> by yeah. doing this yeah. and just if i'm gonna help them i'll just help them and if i want to donate clothes and stuff here i do that and that's just right it. Because the world don't have and to know how I'm helping them, still, what I'm doing. Are you still going you know. to the homeless shelter? Yeah. Oh, you know. Oh, you do. You do know. Uh, you I do, do know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yep. Um, that's that's one thing I that know. I do. Yeah, I do. I still, I still do that. I still do everything that I still do everything that I was doing before, but I do it in silence. That's it. Yeah. I don't need yeah, you, you, I don't need no crowd or nothing that. for that. Um, if you yeah. Notice, yeah, you know this one thing. Do all my charity or whatever I do, uh like that, you never see not one person that I help. You never seen a picture of anybody that I have. If but I you if know I what show the, um if I show the facility where I donate. But that's how it's supposed to be huh? because if we're giving from our heart, you know what I'm saying? Because God knows our motives. He He knows our motives. And if we're giving from our heart, then we sh we shouldn't have to showboat what we're doing because then, to me, it doesn't mean anything because if I'm donating over here and I'm like, oh, yeah, take a picture with the people you donated, who 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 you want to get the glory? 
the people that you're helping or do you want it all for yourself so yeah. they can be another check off your box and say, oh, wow, yeah, he did this or she did that. And that's why we we can't get ahead because our motives are always wrong. And when our motives are wrong, we're not going to get ahead. You think yeah. people, I always say people post what they want people to see on Facebook, but in be, when they're posting these things, mm -hmm. they're not even living their own truth. They just want people to think this is their truth. Right. And they're hurting and they're hiding behind the book, yeah. trying to make people think they just got it all together. So. Yeah. Because, um, you know, uh, and a lot of these people, they're, they're people, relatives and stuff like that. And would you like to, like somebody to put you on front street? Uh, no. You suffer different challenges in, in life, you know? Um, that's why the only thing I show is the building. I let you know where the building is because that's letting you know that you can donate there. But as far as people, exactly. uh, you might, if it's with a staff member or something of that nature, or mm -hmm. if it's a back to school drive, something like that, a big mm -hmm. community event. It, I mean, of course, but anything like that's personal because you have to realize that person is a man that, that is still a woman mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Uh, and um, that's, just, that's just my view. That's just my view, and, and that's, that's just how um, what I believe in. And um, right, I'm not concerned about what nobody else does. I I could care less. I'm telling exactly. if you, if you, know, you if you knew how much I could care less, I could absolutely care less. Well, you know, we always talk about these real talks, and and you know, and I think, and you can you can agree too. One thing that JT taught me and taught us is to do us he taught us to do us and when he said yeah. always do it to perfection and and that's all you owe anybody and that's one mm -hmm. thing that i appreciate about him being who he was yeah. even though sometimes he was hard and rough around the edges but at the same time he taught us those valuable lessons even at fashion shows you know what i'm saying he taught us those things and that's why now mm -hmm. i can walk yeah. in my own boat say I'm not going to accept this I'm not going to do this I can say no if I want to say no and don't feel bad yeah. you know so I just you know just think that JT what, yeah. yeah he is yeah. he, he was JT he was his own some stuff that's actually yeah. really benefiting me now yeah. But I love seeing you I when I see you. Some stuff. He, he he, he. I always represent him. I always represent him. I have that bag yeah. of bow ties that you gave me from him. Mm -hmm. And I always uh, represent him because we had a little battle going on between each other. I don't know if you noticed that uh, <laughs> in the dressing game. We, we had a little... You remember that time we showed up to the event with the same blaze with the same um blazer? <laughs> yeah. He would always he would always show me his socks, like, look, yes, you know, yeah, be. So we had a little secret, like, yeah, like yeah. one time to be um I whisper to him, yeah, you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but um overall, overall, really he made me step my he made me step my shit step my game up, uh, really in a sense, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and he installed instilled in me by watching him a lot of things like being on and a lot of things I apply now I'm I'm on I'm before time when I have appointments <laughs> and stuff now and I'm dealing with people, you know so he, a lot of that I'll stuff stuck to me and um yeah. you know how he would push me yeah yeah, yeah. he'd say you represent your brand you go out there and do that this is you yeah you know he would he would constantly say that. I mean, as as well as yourself, as well as you. But you know, yep. he he was the pusher. Like, man, shit, this your brand. You go out there, and, yeah. you know. And um, by you constantly putting me on front street, I mean, it's like, well, why not? You know. Why not? Uh, and look at you now. Look at you now. Not you know. I remember. Amazing, man. It's just. Amazing. I remember how when you did the um, book signing in um, Sanford, and I saw Monty, you know, reading. And then, you know, and I remember how I had my girls from Shape each read a little piece, you know, of your book. And 
those are the things that we should be doing with our children. Yes. You know, they see us. That was an excuse. And my kids, they were nervous. And they was like, Miss Donna, what if I can't pronounce this word? And I said, it doesn't matter. I said, all that matters is you're getting up there and you're reading. I said, because we as adults, we, we mispronounce words and it's okay. But to see their level of confidence and to get up there and to see your daughter get up there and represent you, that's what we're missing. That's truly what we're missing because our kids, some of them in high school can't even read on a high school level. That's it. That's it. That was a very that was a very proud moment for a father, um, for her to read, uh, and that's something yes. that will stick with her. You know what I'm saying? That's something that will yes. that will stick yes. with her uh, right. throughout life. Yeah, is that I came to this event and I read about my father. He put this together, yes. not knowing the challenges, as we said, the challenges before exactly. the event, you know, the challenge, and we were blessed. We were extremely blessed. Um, I think, uh, didn't the library tell us that was one of the biggest crowds they, uh, yes. they ever yes. had? Yes. Uh, yes. Cleveland that was, is on here. It was amazing. He, yeah, Cleveland. Hey, Cleveland. He's on here. He said, my oh, people. Yeah. And you know, yeah, and that, our, you know, he gave my organization that painting he was painting. So yeah, so uh, that's why I be I was trying to I was you know and and we brought something different. So that's what I wanted to expose the kids and people to a black artist. Right. Look, you can draw, you can paint. Yeah. While that's going. Yeah. On. That's that was the whole thing, and I want to share the platform with everybody. It wasn't just my platform. I had like about five or six authors there. You know, because it's not just about, it wasn't just about me. Yeah. You know it wasn't Ms. just Faith, about me. Miss um, Faith said, yes, our children are our future, and that's an important investment to our society. It is, Miss Faith, but you know what? We're, we're getting away from it because we're becoming selfish. We're becoming so self-centered. We're becoming me, 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 me. If I get to the top, then maybe I'll reach back. But what if, what when you get old? You know what I'm saying? If you start your real estate business and if, if money always see it's about you, 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 um, you just might not have nobody help you run this business because she's going to be like, no, mm -mm. it wasn't about me when you was building, but now that you're old and you want me to take over, they're not going to want to take over these business because they're not part of the investment. And I feel when kids feel they're a part of the investment, then you're gonna get you're gonna get something out of it. They're gonna rise to the occasion and say, you know what? My mom, my dad may be sick or getting older, but I have been invested in this business with them from day one, and I am prepared to take over. And then you won't have a problem where if they're gonna swindle your money because you have trained them, you have taught them, hey. This this is vision is not only for me. This is for you too. You know, this is for you too. <laughs> so, Miss Faye, do you see how this stuff is going right now? So listen, we have been on and off, on and off, but you know what? We 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 still got to the heart and the meat of our conversation. And I, I don't even know what's going on with this tonight, but nevertheless. I am going to, if you try to come back on, that's fine. But I just want to say um, in my closing, it's okay to be bold. It's okay to go after what you desire and what God has purposed in your life. What is not okay is when you operate out of being arrogant or cocky a self-centered because remember whatever you do it either can continue to build or it can easily crumble because who are we and our father can do whatever he wants to so that's why whatever we do 
even in our boldness, we still have to say, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I want to do it in boldness, not cockiness. I want to do it in love, not fakeness. I want to do it in humility and help the next person. And when we can do those things, our boldness will attract people because we're doing it from the heart. We're doing it the correct way. We're not, um, okay, Ebony, that's, um, that's fine. Uh, I'm closing out anyway. Thank you, love you. But we have to do these things in, in just love. And boldness can be done in love. It just depends on if you have the right spirit or not. And so, I just want to take the time to thank my guest, my cousin, my my first cousin, um, Dion Wingate, for just talking about, you know, just being bold and, you know, starting doing real estate. And as you know, like he said, you just don't just wake up one day and say, I want to be this. There's a process. There's a process. There's a 20 year process that they're going back. And see, when you start wanting to do certain things or you try to do certain things you don't know how far you don't know how far they're going to go back you're right miss Faye. praise bill self-esteem you don't know how far they're going to go dig into your mess in order for you to get to the next level and just like he said they went back but because we serve a God, because we serve an amazing God, he can do anything. He can get us anywhere. With a pass, it doesn't matter. And just like Dion and I said, sometimes people don't want to see that new version of you. They want to keep, they want to keep you just where they want you at. And just like when we drive cars, you know, we're going down the highway. If we continue to look in the rearview mirror, we're going to run into some things. We're going to crash. And so when we allow people to hold us to our paths, we're never going to be able to see clearly to the highway, the highway of where we're trying to go, the purpose in where we're trying to go. Because you know what? I don't have to... Uh, keep proving to people that I'm a changed person. I, I don't have to keep doing that. And I used to do that, but you know what? Why? Because you know what? They only going to see what's right in front of them. And their eyes are only limited to what they want to see. So if you're in a state of allowing people to say, girl, I remember when. Well, you keep remembering because you know what? This is 2022. And if you're still trying to talk to me about something that happened in 1985, I, I don't have time because I don't have time to waste the energy of you talking about that person that was in 1985. And that's where we we get stagnant that's where we allow people to crush us crush our dreams crush our vision because we we allow them to do those things because they want to keep us exactly trapped they want to keep us trapped so i challenge you whenever people try to say girl man you remember well you know what whoever you're talking about that person died a long time ago a new person has resurfaced. And see, when you can resurface, you're resurfacing with your mask off because then you don't have to explain anything to people. You don't have to worry about if people remember you used to lay up over here, drink over here, smoke over there. You don't have to worry about those things because when you take your mask off and you're honest and open and transparent with who you are, then nobody can keep you in bondage. Nobody can keep you in bondage, whether it's your family, your friends, co-workers, nobody can keep you in bondage. When you have your mask off, you can be free to be who you are. 
Do we all have a past? Yes. But are you allowing people to hold you prisoner to your past because they're afraid that you might just say, I am tired of dealing with this foolishness with you. And that's when people get mad because they don't they don't want you to see beyond what's in front of you. They don't want you to see, oh yeah, I can buy a house. Oh yeah, I can live over here. I can go back to school. I can start my own business. You mean to tell me that you're going to allow people to suffocate and make you abort what's inside of you? If you've been dreaming of a business that you want to start, writing a book. If we allow people to suffocate us with our past, then we're allowing them to abort everything that God has put inside of us and we won't fulfill it. Because if you know that you're supposed to be writing, you need to write. If God is telling you, you know what, I want you to start this business, then you need to start. Because whatever he tells you, he will give you the resources and everything else will line up. Everything else will line up. But the thing about it is, who are you allowing to stop you from being bold? Bold in your walk with Christ, bold in your walk and saying, there's got to be more out here for me to do. I want more. And I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about things that can elevate you to the next level. More education, applying for a job. If you want this job, go in and say, what do I need to do to help me get this next promotion? But stop allowing people to make you shrink back because they don't want to move forward. And if they don't want to move forward, hey, so be it. Hey, love them and keep it moving. And sometimes we have to cut the apron string in order for us to get untangled because sometimes we stay too long. We get entangled in stuff and we need to be letting it go. But sometimes we allow people and things to keep us entangled so we won't move but i ask you today when are you going to walk in boldness when are you going to walk in your boldness when are you going to come forth when will you come forth because life is not waiting for us people are dying every day every second every minute and if you have something that's burning inside of you then i ask you to start today Write it on paper. If you don't understand, write it on paper. If you know somebody that's got a nonprofit and that's what you want to do, hey, reach out to them and say, hey, how, how, how do you get this started? Tell me what I need to do. Give me the resources that you um, have. But see, that's the problem. Sometimes we don't want to give people resources that we have because we don't want them to get ahead. But if we have the resources and we see this person that wants to go this route. It doesn't mean that it's taken away from us. It just means that's their lane. My cousin and I both have mentor organization. We're in two different lanes, but we have one goal and that's to mentor children and young adults to become better adults when they get older teaching them how to love, teaching them that they can be entrepreneurs at a young age. You don't have to wait till you get 30, 40, 50. You can be an entrepreneur at seven, eight, nine. But we have to invest and be bold enough to invest in ourselves, be bold enough to invest in our children and be bold enough to invest in the people that is connected to us. But if anybody that you're connected to, if they're trying to suffocate you, then just maybe you need to clip it. You need to clip it. Because if you don't clip it, it's just like, you know, when a woman gives birth, you have to clip that a biblical cord. And then that baby, you know, he comes out, she comes out and you clip that cord and life is beginning. And sometimes we just have to do that with people, even at our ages. 
If somebody is suffocating mm. you and not allowing you to breathe, then you need to cut it off because eventually it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you spiritually. It's going to kill you mentally because you're not going to have the fight. So be bold. Be bold. Birth your dreams. Birth your vision. And if you don't have dreams and vision, hey, that's fine. That is totally fine. But be bold in who you are. And don't apologize for being that way. And like I always tell you, there's a difference between being confident and arrogant. And sometimes people get that twisted up. But I'm here today to tell you, just start somewhere. Start somewhere today and be bold. Take a stand for something you want because nobody can make you want it. And just like Dion Wingate, everything that he wanted, he went after it because he had a zeal, because he was bold. And like he said, if it's been done before, it can be done again. But the question is, will it be you to do something different? Do you have what it takes to change something? Or you just sit back and complain and say, we should be doing this or we should be doing that. So until next week, I am your host, Donna Taylor, and this has been another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. And I do apologize for, I don't know what was going on, but to God be the glory anyway. So I will be back next week if God's willing. And guys, please share this video. Please share my flyers on my guests. I have some amazing guests coming up for the next two weeks, and I'm so excited about that. Um, Hot Topics with Donna will be taking a break the sec the third the third and fourth week of December. We're going to regroup. We're going to re um, revamp. I have some amazing guests coming up in January, and I'm just so grateful and thankful that I have had some awesome people on here sharing their story, sharing their testimonies, because this is what this platform is about, ordinary people doing extraordinary things because people need to see real. And on here, we do an honest, open, and transparent because you know what? At the end of the day, if we change one life, if we touch one life, then Hot Topics with Donna has did exactly what it was supposed to do. And until then, I say I love you. Thank you for tuning in week after week. Please share this video that we may reach people all around the world seeing how amazing these guests are. And I'll talk to you then. Good night.